There are so many individuals that already believe in the home-based business model, affiliate model, direct sales model, network marketing model, straight commission sales model, where they, they know that it's their path to freedom. They know that it's a way to escape the matrix. They understand that the government is a freaking scam. They understand that the system is rigged against people like you and I to not win. They get all of this in their being. They know it's not right. They know it's wrong and so on and so on and so on. So what we need to do is just speak to people there, align with them there, rather than trying to talk to people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum and, this, and waste all our energy convincing them that this is the best thing to do. All right, Natalie, next question. Uh, let's go. So we, uh, we got Natalie here, Natalie Wilson. I don't know if you're on live, Natalie, but if you are, feel free to say what's up. Unmute yourself. So hi, Balaj, loving the mentorship and excited for our next call. My question is in regards to the water. I have full belief in our products and know they are amazing. And we have so many testimonials around it, helping so many people. How do you handle leads who are business or even just water leads who Google and see all the smack being talked about in Agic? I've tried sharing research, asking what conflicting info it was that turned them off and even resorting to you can't believe everything on the internet and competitors will sadly try to tear down the top instead of building up the industry. But just curious on what your go-to response would be. I find I have this often <clears throat> with not just people interested in the water, but leads who go through our whole system discovery process, coaching call, ready to go with quad trifecta. And then after doing their own research, this decide they don't feel congruent with the product anymore. Is this just an excuse for not getting started or is there a way to pre-frame and avoid this coming up? Any advice greatly appreciated. So Natalie, this is a powerful question. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this feeling in the chat. Let me know if you agree, like feeling like if they go do their own research, they're going to go find whatever, and then <clears throat> you can't get a sale. And then it's like this thing where you almost like avoid it. And it's just this vicious, like negative cycle. So the first place to start is your own level of belief in your own level of conviction. Okay. Is there even a 1% chance that there is a little bit of doubt from you that might be lingering deep in the subconscious you're not really sure it's there where similar to Felipe possibly someone you love and respect deeply family member parent something like this uh, have commented or judged or made some kind of remark passively or passive aggressively or whatever about the water, about the industry, about network marketing. Maybe it was a best friend. Somebody had something to say. Because sometimes it's not what someone says. It's who said it to you. And the level of emotion and love and respect and loyalty you have to the individual is so deeply rooted in that like connection that it's not what they said. What they said, if a stranger said it, you just be like, Right? Be like, whatever, you just flick them the bird. But if it's a friend or family member, oh, heartbreaking, right? So that's the first place to explore. Because for me personally, <clears throat> I had a lot of this stuff come up. Um, I had a lot of this stuff coming up for me in my first five years with Enagic when I was still a customer and I was trying to sell it and I was telling my friends about it and everyone made fun of me, made fun of my mom, said we got ripped off. It was a scam. Like we heard every single negative thing and we still, you know, occasionally hear something, <clears throat> but <clears throat> there was still always that lagging thought initially where I'm like, are they right? Do they have a point? You know what I mean? So like it would it would get to the point where I would wonder if they were right. I didn't have the full conviction and certainty that I knew for a fact that they were wrong. And that's a pretty big distinction and a big shift. So once you make that shift, 
to you will get a lot more, I should say a lot less of people vocalizing it to you. They might still think it, you might still have leads that ghost you, whatever, but there'll be, it'll be less coming into your, uh, awareness where they will say it right to you. Like, I can't remember the last time someone said something negative about what I do in Agic, direct sales, network marketing that I know and like acquaintances, friends, or any of this stuff directly to me. I can't remember the last time because I will put them in their fucking place so fast that they will probably never even want to talk to me ever again because I just do not accept that shit. That's the level of conviction that I have. Is like, how fucking dare you, buddy? Like, I will go, I will, I will go at you, okay? Because my belief is that strong that I'm I'm so insulted and disrespected that you thought you could get away with saying that to me. That's where I'm at now. Back then, I was almost like, oh, I don't want to, you know. Uh, like it was more like that. Now I'm like, oh, it's been a minute. Bring it, guys. Who who wants some of this? So it's different, and that's why it doesn't happen. So that's the first thing that I would start with. The second thing I would do is you say here at the end, is there a way to pre-frame this? So two things. Number one is create content around this topic and address it directly with the truth. That's a great way to do it. It's also a great way to do it through the pixel like we just talked about with uh, Felipe where you create content through the pixel that addresses this indirectly for people that are skeptics and naysayers. And here's an interesting thing. You know, when we say, think about it, you know, or I need to think about it. It's funny because people don't know how to think about it. Does this make sense? People don't know how to use their brain. They don't know how to use their mind. So they say, I need to go think about it, but it's like, well, what does that actually mean? Because you don't know necessarily how to think about it. So it's like, do you really need to think about it? Or do you actually need more information to make an educated decision? Or do you have a question that you're not asking me that you want to go ask Google instead of just asking me now? Because you don't actually need to think about anything. You just need to have your specific question answered so you can make a decision, right? So that's another thing is like being able to teach people how to think about it. So here's an example. Uh... There's a lot of people that don't even know that like PubMed or Google Scholar or these reputable sites around science and research exists or where they can go. Most people, their think about it or do their own research is as much as punching something into Google and then reading the first thing that comes up and then believing that to be fact. That's not research. That's not due diligence and that's not thinking about anything. That's literally blindly following what you found on Google. And if you ask for something on Google, you will always get what you ask for. It is like a genie in a bottle. If you ask for scams, is Kangen Water a scam? You will get pages and pages and pages and pages of people saying it is. If you say, is Kangen Water or Kangen Water testimonials, you will get pages and pages and pages of Kangen Water testimonials. So you get what you ask for on the internet. Because that's called like keyword research. It's literally how the search engine optimization works, right? Even with uh, <clears throat> ChatGPT and AI and these things, these computer softwares are designed to give you what you ask for. If you ask incorrectly, you get an incorrect answer. But it doesn't tell you that your question was incorrect. It just gives you the incorrect answer. So it's like you're asking, is Kangen Water a scam? And you're hoping that you can negotiate with the internet and the internet tells you, no, Blodge, it's not a scam. You should totally invest in this business and change your life and make your dreams come true. Like, is Google going to say that to you? <laughs> no, Google's going to say, here's all the people that said it's a scam. Enjoy, read away, watch these videos. And if you say, it, you know, Kangen Water testimonials, sure, here you go. Your wish is my command. Here's all the videos of people saying that changed their life. Right. So, so my point is, is as I say this, I'm saying it kind of like, you know, with, with this undertone of sarcasm, but it's actually how people operate. So when we put out content or we put out ads or we put out retargeting things, we can actually go, are you skeptical? <clears throat> if so, let me show you how you can do effective research to get the truth. Step one, go to PubMed. Step two, go to Google Scholar. You know, 
enter in electrolyzed reduced water peer-reviewed studies. You know, give them the specific steps. Show them how to get the right information. And then they'll do it, and then what are they going to say? They did their own research and they came back with the wrong information? No, because you show them how to find the right information. This is making sense for everybody? <clears throat> Same thing with the whole... Uh, Direct scales is a or direct, direct scales. Wow, that's my brain starting to go. Um, <laughs> it's like this is my sixth hour of consecutive calls. But anyways, um, what I was gonna say was, uh, you know, it's a pyramid scheme. It's like okay, let's actually define what that is. Let's actually make a piece of content that types in what is a pyramid scheme and like breaks that down. These are all things that you can do if you really are having a hard time with people doubting your stuff doubting your business, doubting your whatever, is um, just address it directly head on, okay? Uh, that's the second thing. The third thing is that you might just be trying to convince people that are not really a good fit for this. You know, I was, in, I was posting more and more on my Instagram recently around like, content that is in support of network marketing. You probably noticed like in support of the industry, asking poll questions like, is it a good career? Whatever, whatever, like these kinds of things. And there's a lot of people who are like die hard fans and also haters. We had a video go viral on the official Diamond Life account. It's at 4.5 million views, which is pretty cool. And it's this guy on stage talking about how having a job is a scam because after 40 years, you still are broke. And then all these people in the comments, they have opinions about it and they're saying, oh, we need to have jobs. And it's like, it's great because it's very polarizing and there's different opinions, but it just goes to show you that there are people like on the left side and the right side. They believe it's the greatest thing ever and they also think it's the stupidest scammy thing ever on the planet. And that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter. We don't need to take anybody from the it's a scam and flip them into it's the greatest business model in the world. We don't need to actually do that. What we need to do is let those people stay where they are and then talk to the people who think that this is a great idea. So there are so many individuals that already believe in the home-based business model, affiliate model, direct sales model, network marketing model, straight commission sales model, where they, they know that it's their path to freedom. They know that it's a way to escape the matrix. They understand that the government is a freaking scam. They understand that the system is rigged against people like you and I to not win. They get all of this in their being. They know it's not right. They know it's wrong and so on and so on and so on. So what we need to do is just speak to people there, align with them there, rather than trying to talk to people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum and, and waste all of our, our energy, energy convincing them that this is the best thing to do. So those are my tips on um, how to go about this. Let me see what else you wrote here real quick. Uh, another thing, when I was a lot more active with my direct sales and lead gen and stuff, especially before the online, online lead gen stuff became a big part of how we do things, is <clears throat> I'm a really huge believer in the whole uh, killing an objection before it comes up. So when I was in conversation with people, I knew that at some point they would most likely say, I'm going to go do my own research and think about it and get back to you or something like that. I knew it was coming because it kept coming in all these conversations. It was like a regular part of the, the conversation at the end, right? So as we approached the end of a conversation, I said, hey, I just want to let you know something real quick. And they're like, okay, great. Be like, from my experience helping X number of people, you know, really establishing like my credibility there, like helping people quit their jobs or get healthy or fill in the blank with something that sounds awesome. With my experience doing this, when people say they're going to go do their own research, usually one of two things happen. First one is they call someone they love and respect, their parents, their uncles, their brothers, their spouse, their best friend, their boss at their job. And they ask them what their opinion is on this opportunity, this product, this business. And whatever that person says, they just believe them. And I want to let you know, this is very important, 
that you do not take advice from somebody who doesn't have the results that you want and you wouldn't trade places directly with them when it comes to their health, wellness, fitness, when it comes to their lifestyle, their freedom, their income. And so you might love and respect them and they might have a lot of love for you to protect you and keep you safe, but that doesn't necessarily mean that their opinion is valid or qualified in this conversation. Does that make sense for you, sir? Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. All right, great. So if they do say something negative, feel free to come back, let me know, and I'm happy to address the specific thing that they said about why they don't agree that this is a good idea. Fair enough? Yeah, okay, that's fair. It hasn't even happened yet. You see how powerful this is? And then the next part is I'd be like, and the second thing that usually happens is people go on Google and it's kind of what we just talked about a few minutes ago. It's like what they what they want conf- confirmation on is what they will find. So if they want confirmation that their doubts and their skepticism about this being a legitimate scam or something like this, if that's directly what they're asking for, they will have people that will say that for various reasons. Some is marketing reasons, some is personal experience, some is just victim mentality folks that are out there. Variety of reasons they will confirm that your suspicions are true. But if you search for something positive and you're looking for reasons to counter your initial skepticism with proof, with evidence, with results, with a testimonial or something like this, and you ask the question accurately to Google, you will also find plenty of information that says that this is the real deal. So I just want to let you know how you use the internet is the results that you have. Fair enough. They'll go, yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So last thing I'll say before we wrap up this call is either one of those things that I just shared, if that happens to you, just let me know directly what came up Instead of just ignoring me, ghosting me, or, you know, avoiding this conversation, which isn't really fair, is it? They're like, nah. Cool. Sounds good. We'll chat soon. So like, it's that where you're just literally cornering them with expertise and they're just going, fuck, this guy knows his shit. Like he's already basically telling me the one or two things that I might do and telling me if I do those things, here's what I'm gonna find, and once I find it, here's what I gotta do about it to basically come back to him. They're just like, well, shit, (laughs) right? You see how powerful this is? So then all of a sudden, when that happens in that exact sequence and they come back to you, you're in a position of strength because there's like, you're a pro. You're a pro, you know what's up, you know, and you're not avoiding the conversation around the scam stuff. You're not avoiding the conversation around what if your spouse, family member, parent is negative about this stuff. You are literally going like, yeah, this is common. This happens all the time. And so I just want to give you the insight of how to handle it so they don't rob you of your potential and they don't steal away your dreams by not getting started in something that can truly change your life. Fair enough? They're like, yep, that's fair. So these are some things that I've done and it's really, really powerful. And I, and my, my level of people ghosting me went like way down after I started doing that.